anyone who is using sharpening needs a genuine tool to help uh, advance their sharpening business. Hi, Dan with Sharpening Supplies. And with me today is David Pierce from Wolf Industries. All right, so David, um, walk us through a little bit. Uh, how would we go about using this machine? So it's a very easy, if you go follow the process step by step, uh, it, the principles of sharpening would dictate that you start with your coarsest grit and you sure. work up to your finest to remove material step by step and systematically polish. And the exact same thing is true in this case. We'll start with our 80 micron, working down to 60, then 30, then 15, followed by nine, and go up to our diamond paste, high okay. polish compound if needed. The one, a couple tips and tricks on how to do this at a, in a manner to give you the best results is when I have my discs here, I want to make sure that if I'm using, for example, the 80 micron disc, that my 60 micron disc or anything less than 80 is face down. I don't wanna get any of the particles or grit that become airborne in this process to embed into my, uh, into my lower micron. Uh, sure, because then you'd get deep scratch. And absolutely. You'd try to polish and you'd have a absolutely. big hunk of metal in there. Yep. For the sake of today's video, we'll use a larger industrial shear. Uh, typically, I would sharpen on a convex shear or a Barber Beauty grooming shear, but just so we can see some better detail, we'll use this guy. This is the Kai 7250. So first, I'll set my angle. Okay. In this case, since we, you know, distribute the shear, I happen to know that when I sharpen it, the finger blade will be at 50 and the thumb blade will be at 45, okay. but there are various ways you can do, run a scratch test or use an angle gauge to, to okay. find and verify the angle that you need to be sharpening at. On the clamp here, if you'll notice, there's an L and an R. This is a right-handed shear, so wherever I lock in my R, that's the angle that I'm sharpening at. So this uh, obviously then does left-handed shears as yes, well? Yes, so? yes, it does okay. It does do left-handed shears. So I've got my angle set at 50, which is the angle that I need to grind my finger blade at. And I will simply loosen the clamp. And I wanna be as straight as possible in line with the golden portion of the arm. So I can kind of use this as a, as a directional arrow and I don't wanna to be too far to the right or to the left of it. So I'm a little bit, if you see where the tip is, I've kind of averaged a little bit to the right. So I'm just gonna pop that back left, Sure. tighten it up. Now I notice on this uh, scissors, you're not taking them apart. Correct. Or frequently, uh, I believe like on the convex shears, you would typically yeah, take Yes, so any, anything into... with that's gonna require inside grind work needs to be taken apart so you can properly remove those burrs um, and redefine your inside edge. Okay. Absolutely. Fantastic. So I'll turn the machine on here, position the light uh, according to how you like it. And since this is a right-handed shear, mm -hmm. I'm going to push the directional switch to the back, which is going to cause my rotation to go clockwise. When I'm using a coarser grit, I don't wanna to spend too much time uh, on the blade to prevent any burning. And so I tend to go at a bit of a higher speed. Okay. Um, so I'll set my dial up here between eight and nine. So I'll simply start by approaching the, uh, the disc. Uh, I don't wanna start with just the tip on the machine. I wanna start about you know a quarter to a third of the way in. And I will slowly work back and forth, making sure not to cross the center point of the wheel. What I mean by that is if I have the entirety of my shear on the disc, if I cross this center point, I've now crossed the rotational motion. Does so that make sense? Quite, sure. Now yep. So that'll just cause a big uh-oh and probably ruin the pad for me. But I noticed uh, getting a little bit of dust here. Obviously, we're shooting a video where we want to be able to understand him. We're just doing a little bit. So not wearing masks right now, but uh, remember, mask is included with yes, this. Yes, yes. Always, collection. always, always make sure you're wearing a mask. One is provided in the kit uh, when you purchase the machine. And if uh, if you don't want to wear a mask, you need to make sure you have some type of ventilation or dust collection system. Because you don't want to be breathing that dust anymore than necessary. Exactly. Okay. Um, after I would sharpen on the 80 micron, what I would want to do before I put on my 60 micron or work down in the polishing stages, I want to remove this burr or at least uh, fold the burr off to the other side. Okay. So the way I can accomplish that safely by hand uh, is to come reach around the thumb blade very carefully not to poke my forearm. And I will simply run my thumb along the bottom of the cutting edge, mm -hmm. moving from right to left, not left to right, 
not up and down. I want right. to make sure that I'm just pulling this direction. Right. We, we like to emphasize across the edge, not along. Yes, it. absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And your, your thumb will thank you. Yeah. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to work down to the 60 micron, uh, mm -hmm. but it's going to help me start to kind of fill in those gaps when you're sharpening. Okay. And then I should mention you're uh, talking, you mentioned microns here as opposed to grits. These are done in the micron system. Correct. These are so measured the, in microns. The larger the number, the coarser the grit, the smaller the yes, number, absolutely. the finer the grit. Absolutely. Okay. So pretty much the exact same process as with my 80 micron, working back and forth until I have a full and complete burr, which as I look in the light, I can see that I have. Mm -hmm. So I will once again, brush that burr out of the way, pull the burr out of the way, and I will step down into my 30 micron. Excellent. And these are conveniently color coded for you, as well as sure. written on there. So you can make sure you're you know not mixing it up. And as I get to this middle area, this is a personal preference. As I get to the 30 and 15, I'll slow the machine down and spend a bit more time okay. since it's a, a finer grit or a higher, uh, lower micron rather. Um, mm -hmm. I can spend a bit more time without potentially burning this year. Okay. You're noticing you're doing a nice smooth action following the curvature of the- Absolutely. Of the, the whole- shear line there. The whole point of this machine is to take all of the physicality out of it. Let the machine do the work for you. Mm -hmm. Slow is mm -hmm. smooth, smooth is fast. We've all heard that expression before. Just sure. working back and forth at a gentle, controlled pace, letting the speed and rotation of the motor take care of all the hard work. Right for now, us. I notice you're also you're not pressing down on the machine. Correct. This Just letting the very weight weight of the tool yep, itself. The weight of the tool itself. Okay. You'll notice as you do this more and more. Um, as you pull the burr out of the way, if your blade starts to get hot to the point where it is, you know, uncomfortable to touch, it, you know, it's burning your finger, we want to be mindful of that. And it's a good indicator. If you touch this and it's burning you, it's too hot. Lighten up and slow down. Lighten up. So I'll now go down to the orange, which is the 15 micron. Sure. Another thing that I haven't mentioned yet, uh, and the convenience of having this light right here, is without losing my angle, because it's locked here, Mm -hmm. I can rotate the scissor over and kind of get a little progress report on how I'm looking. Okay. If that makes sense. So sure. like I can angle in the site to see if I'm, you know, are there any areas that I'm, you know, having high spots on, low spots on, or in this case, I have a relatively consistent polish and one that's not mm -hmm. half bad if I do say so myself. Absolutely. But. If we were working on a convex shear at this point, you could keep rotating to get Absolutely. that entire con convexity nice yep. and clean and smooth but have the upper limit set yeah. so that you would stop Correct. at the maximum. Correct, without right. going too far into that cutting edge, dulling out your shear or removing excess material. You, you hit the nail on the head there. The entire goal of this machine uh, is convexing made easy to where, you know, it's kind of almost foolproof where I have a, a hard stop here and mm -hmm. I physically can't rotate it any further. Sure. That being said, you know, I can work back and forth freely uh, mm -hmm. You know, and that's what kind of helps us get these convex shears sharpened at such a quick rate with such consistent uh, edge work. So our next step before I go all the way into our high polish um, is our nine micron. In most industrial applications or in most uh, most grooming shear standard bevel, this is as polished as you'll need to get. Uh, when you get into higher end convex barber beauty shears, uh, mostly for human hair. Uh, is where going all the way up to your you know high polished diamond paste is okay. necessary. But for most standard bevel edge and just about anything for dog groomers, this is as high as a polish as you'll need. So this gives us options here. You can uh, stop at various levels depending on how far you need to take. Absolutely. Okay. You know, one thing we talked a little bit about before off camera, but. Um, I'm noticing that because this is the hook and loop attachment uh, discs you have here as opposed to the PSA, the pressure sensitive adhesive, and you've got a little bit of give in the, the pad on that as you're uh, following that curvature around kind of at the edge of your disc here. Correct. So the Velcro, the Velcro backing, which I'll actually show you here, if you peel back here, this Velcro uh, you know, when it's spun, actually acts as a bit of a backing pad. So you have some freedom, you have some some vertical give that's going to help you, uh, you know, maintain that consistent uh, consistent polish on it. So the last step is I will load up my 
diamond paste felt pad. Uh, these don't come preloaded, we just did this off camera. Uh, and I will jack the speed of this machine as high as I want it to go. The diamond paste itself is rated between a three and seven micron. It's printed on the label here. So I'll crank this machine up and I can, I can spend a good bit of time on this blade. And when you first take, when you first give it a look, you'll notice it's a bit cloudier. Mm -hmm. What I need to do is give that a quick wipe. And when you wipe away the uh, stainless steel debris and the, you know, the different dust the, and stuff that's collected. The residue that's collected yep, on that. You'll have uh, as close to a mirror finish as you can get. Okay. Let me grab something to wipe that with. Sure. I, I don't want this part on camera because this is when I cut my finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck monetizing this. I'm gonna sever my artery in my hand. <laughs> do you want to do a close up on the mirror finish that it, that it leaves? Yep. On the inside of your convex barber beauty grooming, you will see a faint line that runs all the way around. That is what's called your inside edge, your inside grind. Um, and basically the way that we will properly reestablish that on, upon resharpening is with our Shapton stone. This is a glass Shapton stone. This is our uh, 6,000 grit. Comes with your Hero 2. You install it in the stone holder, tighten it up like, like so. And I'll take the scissor apart using our Wufo tool. I'll simply align the proper spokes. So that one, those are a bit wide. Those fit just fine. And I'll loosen this hardware up, and then I'll take the scissor apart, and I'll work the scissor back and forth on the stone with a little bit of water, uh, checking as I go to see if I've established a consistent inside grind. Okay, excellent. And so you would say that with the uh, with the standard kind of Hero Two uh, setup, you will get everything that you need to begin sharpening. Up. Absolutely. Yeah, even the more complicated convex grind. Yes, everything everything that you could potentially run into uh, out in the wild. You've, you're covered with anything you're gonna see on your daily sharpening routes. Um, and if you happen to find anything that you can't sharpen on this, give us a call and we'd love to, <laughs> we'd love to figure out a way to sharpen it for you. I'll go one more just to show off. Some smooth cutting. There you have it. For everyone else out there, thanks for watching. Uh, please do come and visit us at sharpeningsupplies.com. Take the glasses off. It's fogging right. real bad. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. Yeah. Comment below. Yeah.